Hello and welcome back. My name is Brandon Watts and today we're going to be turning this living room shot into this well-balanced, nicely lit, saturated, contrasty looking image. So let's go and start here in Photoshop. And you can see that this is my window replacement layer, which is an ambient layer. It was a it was semi-dark inside of Lightroom, but I already made some adjustments to it to go ahead and just bring out the windows a little bit more. This is my darkest ambient, followed by what my camera thinks is the middle exposure. This is about a half stop. Uh, oh, yeah, this is the brightest exposure, followed by my base layer, which is just slightly brighter than what the camera believes to be the middle exposure here. So this is gonna be my, be my base ambient, which will build the uh, HDR composite off of. Below that is gonna be my fill flash images. This, I bounced off of a wall right behind me just to fill the uh, room. But if you've ever learned about flash photography, you know that bouncing or shooting a light straight on from the camera is never uh, a good choice. It's not flattering. So this is what our side fill flashes are going to be for on the right as well as on the left. So let's going to get started. With my brightest exposure, and of course you can do this in Photoshop, uh, merge your exposures, your ambient layers through Photoshop or through Lightroom. Um, you can also use Infuse as a plugin through Lightroom, but I just like to do, do mine through Lumenzia as there's a custom action that's uh, provided that just makes it a little bit faster, but um, I'll, walk it, I'll walk it through step by step so that we can see what each exposure is doing. So this is my base. We're just gonna base ambient. And my brightest exposure is of course a little too bright, but it's perfect for the shadows. As you can see, There's not really any noise in there compared to this one, which is the window layer. You can just see that when I boosted the shadows, there's just all this noise that shows up inside of there. So that's what this bright exposure is for. The brightest exposure is to minimize that noise that shows up inside of those shadows. So with this, I'm gonna go D4. And you can see here that Everywhere that's white, it's what's going to be revealed. And in black, the brightest parts of the image is going to be uh, concealed. It's going to be hidden. So I'll go ahead and work with, I think, that's going to be too much. We're just going to go with a little bit of these shadows right here. And select that. We'll hit mask. And you can see how, just turning that off and on, it brings a subtle change to the darker parts of the image. Off, on, it's not a whole lot, because we only did, uh, I think it was like D4, uh, or D3. Um, it's a subtle change, subtler change, compared to what we did just this uh, full D. And I don't want to add that much as this is looking fairly balanced with those shadows. So we'll go ahead and do this for the highlights, which as you can see here, turned off is just overexposed, way too bright. You don't get to see any of that texture of the rug that should be there compared to this middle exposure, which shows more texture in there compared to this darker exposure, which that's a little too dark though you can plainly see everything that's there it's not really what we're looking for so we're just going to go with this one here you can also see here in the highlights of the couch how that brings them back compared to what we have right now with the base image let's go ahead and do let's try l2 for the lights now, that might be a little bit too much. Let's go ahead and go with L3. Yeah, that's looking pretty nice. Brings quite a bit back right there quite nicely. Gonna select that. And since we're working with the highlights, we're gonna wanna go ahead and uh, 
feather this after we mask it. Boom. You can see here in the highlights that they start to come back a little bit. Not fully, but it does bring them back a little bit. Now we're going to go with, actually that's because we haven't feathered it. Right now it's at a feather of 400. And if you want to feather it, you can also feather your mask. You can go into properties and change it in here so it's not like you have to have Lumenzia. But for highlights, I'm going to go ahead and drop that down to about 8. Compared to a 400, you can see the difference of the mask at or 200, 400. You see how it spreads out that mask compared to about what we need right here just to kind of bring in those highlights. We don't want to go too much because if we do that, things start to look a little funky. So we're going to go with eight and you can see how that kind of brought that back right there. Now we'll do the same thing with the darks or with the darkest. This one, I think we can get away with. Oh, sorry. L2. Yeah. And on this one, just so that way we can get more of that sky, we're going to adjust the mask a little bit. To make sure that this shows up more whiter, which will bring back more of that mask, those highlights through the mask. So let, boom, go to feather. See how that's now. This one's looking a little too much. Let's see here. Usually around eight is good. Sometimes you just want to play with it just to see what you can get out of it. We're gonna leave it here. <clears throat> now, you can see that this is just starting to look a little too muddy. It brought back too much of the highlights in these areas. So we're gonna brush that out with a 20%. Whoop. Switch B to the brush. Two on the keyboard to make that 20% opacity and with a black foreground color I'm gonna brush those highlights back in to make this seem just a little bit more natural now of course this is much faster when you have an action that just takes care of the majority of the work for you but I'm just gonna show you step by step real quick all right, that looks decent. We'll go ahead and merge that into one solid layer. Hit Command J on the keyboard to make a copy of that. And this is just gonna be so that we can use that for later on. See where we started from. Now, with this one, just name that ambient. What we'll do is Command J. Changes the color, set a black mask on it. That's gonna be our repair color layer from the ambient in case we need it. And this one we can set to luminosity. Change this to a 50% 50, 50 blend. Group these two together, name this ambient blend. There we are. Now with a fill flash, well this one is gonna be our dark and repair layer. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing as we did with the ambient, change this to color, but in this case we're going to set the second one to darken, and we'll group these two, change this to darken blend, darken blend, and you can see how it brings back those highlights 
with it just the uh, darken layer and you see how that brings that back now for these we're going to set a mask white mask black foreground hit G for gradient make sure that it's a uh, black to transparent gradient and we're going to just drag that straight across and if, this is not going to be too perfect because you can see that right in the middle there's this blooming so you got to really try your best to make sure that there's no overlapping blooming for this to work better but with a little bit of extra time we can just we can fix we can fix those errors okay so that looks good set this back to darken and set this back on for the ambient now I like to adjust the ambient a little bit more because I don't like it to have it too overly muddy washed out color you can see that in these colors and the highlights the shadows it's all kind of muddy and it's not really too contrasty so I like to even though we set the uh, the base luminosity mask for the ambient to 50% I think I'm gonna drop it another 50% Yeah, that looks good. That looks good for the dark, and it's a little too dark. Right now, I'm looking at these shadows right here. Originally, they're just a little too dark right there. So I think I'm just gonna lighten that up a little bit, but that reintroduces that flash that the darken layer was originally recovering so we'll fix that by getting that ambient layer again you can see that already it's starting to look better we'll set that back to about here 70 I'm gonna add a black layer mask B for brush set maybe like 50% opacity and we're gonna just brush that back in might even have to do a second pass and just go 100% right there okay that looks a little bit more natural from here we'll go ahead and start the repair of the window replacement now you don't always have to do this, but whenever you have a good view, sometimes it's good to go ahead and mask out those windows. So that's what we're gonna do here. Right now I'm just using the pen tool to make the general mask I'm going to fast forward through this so that way you don't have to walk, sit through the entire thing. Now to get rid of these mullions, I'm going to switch to my lasso tool, make sure it's set to subtract. Shoot. 
switch back to the pen tool for this one since it has a little bit of some curves to it it's easier to make curves with the pen tool compared to with the lasso tool Selection, subtract from selection, boom. Now we'll go ahead and just do mask. And you can see how nice that looks. Oh, you know what? Sorry. Let's go ahead and undo that. We're going to feather it by one pixel and then mask it and you can see that looks much better along the edges I did get this pole right here but I'm gonna fix that later on all right so we're looking good right there now what we can do is go ahead and start to use our side fill flash layers to kind of paint some flash back in. Oh. All right, so. What I'm looking to do with these is to kind of paint back in. You can see here, like this nice looking wood. This is the, the blend that we have going on so far. But by adding this flash layer to it, it has some nice rich color to it. it. Has some nice shadows coming off of it. I think I'm gonna end up using that as well as the pole uh, colors that are coming off of this. Or you know what, I might actually, yeah, you wanna use that one for sure. And then I'll probably use it on these pillows right here to kind of bring those back. And I'll also use it to bring back some of the shadows that are inside of this wood or on the side of this on the side of the wood. As you can see, it's just looking kind of flat. I mean, the overall image is looking better from where we started. You can see here, this is what we started with the ambient HDR layer before adding the flash layers to it. And this is where we're at right now. But we're gonna make it look even better by brushing in some of that flash. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to click once with the brush tool, hold shift, and then click again, and the brush will follow wherever. your second click is makes things easier rather than having to drag it around like that just brushing back in some of that color from the flash those warm colors just makes it look a little bit better, in my opinion. Not that you have to do this. It's just taking it an extra step further to make the image look just that much better. I'm going to paint back in this. Some of that color right there. nice and rich rather than like an overseas editors washed out edited image do I like those pillows or do I like these oh I like those pillows better 
I'm gonna brush that in. Dang. Yeah. Let's bring this up. There we go. Make sure you're on the mask when you're doing it. There we are. Do I like that? Nope, I sure don't. I sure don't. I do like those white pillows. We gotta bring back in this. Golden color here. W on the keyboard for a quick selection tool. Helps stuff like this become that much faster. Brush to switch back. Boom. Looks nice. Looks nicer. Nicer. Can we brush this back right here? Sure can. And that's why with a pen tool I would have had that had to make the selection once on the bottom side as well as on the top side. And right here, by just making your brush slightly small enough to fit in there, some things become just that much easier. That much easier. Because when it comes to real estate photography or Airbnb photography, you want to get your images done quick. Because that just means more money per hour spent. But in architectural photography, you want to spend a little bit more time processing your images to make everything look nice, nicer, magazine quality. So I'm just so showing you steps that you can take if you wanted to take the extra time. Otherwise, everything I'm showing you is not 100% necessary. You could have gone away with. There we go. You could have gone away with just that right there. I mean, that looks nice, looks decent. But we're bringing in some more character. Super easy stuff. Super, super easy stuff. See how nice that looks. Now for the wood, I'm actually going to use that. other fill flash layer we'll see what I mean here in a second Command H to hide your selection. And fill that. Nope, that's the wrong one. Go into this other. There we go. There we go. Look how much nicer that that frame looks when I so much better. So much better. Let's see, what else can we do here? We're gonna bring back in some of this podium. This little bit of a pedestal. Command D to deselect because we were still selected onto those frames. I'll paint back some of that in. 
And I think I'm going to paint back in this wall. I want to W on the keyboard to select, uh, quick select. P for pen tool. Because sometimes the quick select is a little too quick. Start selecting things you don't really need. Subtract from selection. Boom. And option shift delete fills that selection with whatever is on your foreground color. It's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. I think I actually like this as well right here. Boom. Looks nice. Looks pretty nice. Alright, so from here, I'm going to merge all visible. And do a little camera roll adjustment. We'll go ahead and hit auto, see what it gives us. I don't like those shadows. It brings back the shadows too much on everything that we just worked on. We're going to brighten it because it was very sunny that day with light just streaming in streaming in that is looking really good right there that is looking really good and are we clipping the highlights a little bit on that frame there we go shadows I don't mind those are clipped that's fine before after that looks pretty good pretty good all right now what we can do is fix this flash Of course, you can fix this with a gradient. You don't need to have additional plugins. I just like to have that KO Tech, KO Tech plugin as uh, it helps me to quickly replace skies and grass, all that stuff you kind of want to fix in your images whenever things aren't going your way that day might be a little too cloudy overcast maybe it's middle of December and the grass is dead so you gotta green it up for them you gotta virtually green up the grass and those are just extra services that you can add to your photography your real estate photography with this little TV screen replacement boom you can see well you know what forgot to feather that again we'll go ahead and Feather that real quick. TV screen replacement. You can see how quickly that is applied. And we can also click into here and start to um, change the direction of from where the glare is coming from. And since the windows are coming from this top right direction, I think I'm going to add it to about that direction. What's also nice is that you can go into the gradient overlay and just kind of, you can even click around and drag it over, which is nice. And that, although it might be easy to do through Photoshop, just makes things easier when you have a plugin that helps you out. TV replacement. Same thing with Raya Pro. I like to use that to sharpen the image overall. Super quick. I'm gonna merge those 
And to show you again from where we started, oh, you know what? Shoot, almost forgot. Almost forgot. Dang it. Let's do one more thing. I'm going to have to copy both of these again. Bring them up over. <clears throat> Let's uh, just fill this. And what I'm going to want to do is bring, in, bring back that floor. Totally forgot to bring back the floor. Crazy guy. Crazy guy. There we go. Make that look a little bit better. Super quick. And I can't do it on this one just because my feet are there on that layer, so I'm gonna have to use this portion. That actually doesn't change it too much, but we'll just hit it anyways. Bam. All right. And let's go ahead and just get that selection real quick. Bring that into camera raw. Oh, you know what? Merge that, then bring this into camera raw. And I'm gonna just adjust that real quick. Nope, I don't want that. There we go. And you can see, there we are. The overall image is looking a lot better. A lot better. We'll go ahead and hit it. Actually, I'm fairly certain it's straight. We we'll hit that. I think it just throws it off because of this right, this left edge of the TV. It tries to account for that. So that's it. There we go. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Otherwise, thank you for coming. I appreciate your time, and I will see you in the next video.